Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet Shitlords. And uh, today I'm doing a review of The Punchline by Zarkov Kowalski for Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Sword and Caravan over here. I was, I didn't mention this in my last video, the one about D&D in a castle, but, you know, if, instead of spending upwards of, what, like $5,000, you know, 3000 plus the 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 hotel costs plus the airline ticket to go play in a castle with some you know c grade voice actors uh just you know spend like about 500 bucks on really good osr products like uh sword and caravan or the old school companion 2 and you're gonna have uh you know a great a great time right so check out all of my products sword and caravan is selling like hot, hot cakes it's doing really really well um you there's a video of it in my you know the unboxing video a bit earlier in this channel so check that out to get more information and uh, if you don't have a lot of money if you don't have even 500 bucks then uh you know you can check out my rpg pundit presents pdf series you know there's there's 106 uh, issues more are on the way um well some more anyways are on the way sooner or later um and every one of them has something that you can use in your DD osr style of play you're gonna you're bound to find something you like and it's like you know the cost of um buying me a coffee not even given what coffees must cost these days with inflation and whatnot so uh but you're you're getting something back right it's better than just throwing patreon money at me though if you really don't want to buy any of my books or you bought all my books there's a patreon link below anyways Getting on now to the punchline. So the question is, is the punchline one of these books that you would be better off buying than going to some hotel to play D&D with uh, voice actors and porn stars? <laughs> uh, we're we're going to find out here. So this book is uh, an adventure for Lamentations of the Flame Princess, part of the ones that were released um, this, this past year. There was a whole bat bunch. I think it was 10 at a time that, uh, that James Raggi printed and um this is an adventure as you can imagine from the cover that features clowns book is hardcover slightly uh, roughly the same size proportions as the old school companions um not the same width though <laughs> this uh this product comes out at uh what is it 38 pages or so so it's it's not especially big but it's an adventure, you know, so it's not likely to be all that big. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it's a um, an adventure that focuses on villainous clowns, right? But not just any villainous clowns. It's actually like the Comedia del Arte, right? The uh, the characters of the Harlequinade, um, which are around here somewhere. Where are they? Oh, there we go. So it's like you know Harlequin and uh, Columbine. Clown and Pantaloon and Pierrot. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, this is a pretty, at this point, you know, evil clowns. You, you, short of Cthulhu, there are a few things that have been more done than evil clowns. <laughs> but uh, but uh, the setting of the game, of the, of the adventure, is in a isolated little town and is surrounded by mountains. And um, there's some strange goings on. People have been dying of a mysterious plague and uh children are being kidnapped so um that's kind of the setup the adventure is done in the format of a um of a sandbox type of game so it's it's um done in a sandbox format and what you have is a whole bunch of npcs that are detailed with all kinds of information about themselves and why they're relevant to the adventure um you also have of course an outline of the villains it's their dark rituals and whatnot um an area map that is you know pretty simple basically but it tells you the, the few locations that are of relevance to the adventure and what you'll find in them along with some more specific maps obviously I, everything is in full color the card stock is very nice um it's very well as as all lamentations books are it's very well produced you know um what this doesn't have like i've been thinking what why i don't quite like this as much as some of the other ones if you look back at the in the reviews playlist 
you'll see I've recently reviewed several of these new Lamentations books, and I was trying to figure out, you know, what it is, because I read through this, I was kind of like, well, meh, okay, whatever, you know. Um, besides the fact that, you know, the clown thing is overdone, I think that what got to me here is um, there's nothing there's nothing really super new about this this adventure it it does a number of things that have already been done some of who it, which have already been done either by uh, by Raji or by other people um, and um, it just kind of mashes a few of them together and also it what it what it doesn't have I, I think that this is like the biggest criticism I'd give of it right because I mean okay if you like investigative type adventures with the I like the concept of evil um evil renaissance clowns um and you know supposedly doing dark blood rituals you know satanic blood rituals or whatever um there there isn't anything by the way that is like extremely beyond gross here and and the most edgy thing is of course the the element that it's you know there's child sacrifice involved right um but nothing graphic there's not even a lot any especially graphic art here like compared to some of the other products of lamentations but um the thing that got me ma mainly about this is that it it doesn't seem quite as well crafted as some of the other lamentations products in that it doesn't actually have a a um structured chronology and i think that that's something that is that is a lot um that is that is a functional benefit to any um to any adventure that is set up to be a sandbox. And and that's because, you know, the sandbox, and for, for those of you, just in case that there's anyone here that doesn't understand what the term sandbox means, that's an adventure that is set in an area, in a space, which is open, right? There are things happening there in that sandbox that make up the adventure, but there isn't a pushing of the characters from one thing to, to another in order. Like um, the opposite of a sandbox is a railroad, right? Which is when, where the the DM or the or the adventure designer um, creates a set of events that go one into the other, and the player characters are expected to go along with them. In some cases, they're forced to, right? Like you know, there'll be some reason why the player characters have to go from point A to point B to point C and and do these things in order. Um, in some cases, it'll just be they'll just be tricked to like that's what's called illusionism where it's like well you could go left or right but and then the book says well no matter which way they go they encounter this you know um or uh, in some cases they're just it's just expected that the players will go along because otherwise there's no adventure you know and it, in the case of a sandbox you don't have any of that what you have is locations and groups and, and factions and time um, and you have to have all of those because the idea is you're in a living area a living setting and so when it's done right, it works really, really well. When it's not done right, it doesn't work quite as well. And um, it's, so you have to have NPCs that are acting on their own volition and that will do things with or without the player characters and will react to the player characters in different ways. A good sandbox adventure will explain how they will react to that. Like almost all of the adventures in the Old School Companion 2 are are some type of sandbox adventure. There's one or two that aren't, but but for the most part, that's what they are. And so it'll have characters there that the players will interact with and, and i go into great detail when i write those adventures about the characters motives and what they're doing right um and you know there's there's a good bit of that in the punchline it then there is the question of locations and so you have to have different locations different areas will have different things at different times um that will work in a certain way and then the, but the third factor is time it's it's really important that you know if the player characters aren't just going to like hang around and that's that's kind of assumed right like in the in the in the punchline obviously if the player characters sit around and do nothing let's say in in the town or or what have you then the um the the the, the red terror the the plague and the the killings will continue right um and and eventually everybody who's in the town will end up getting the plague and will die <laughs> or most of them will die um, and, and that's kind of said, but what you don't have is any sense of like a step-by-step -step pacing of this will happen in X amount of time, which, which puts it a, a different pressure on the adventure in a, in a way that is, I think, beneficial. But, uh, I mean, that's, that's my biggest criticism from the point of view of a designer, right? If you're a DM, you can get around that you can work through it. And, and so it's not, 
it's not to say that this adventure is fatally flawed or something like that. It's not. It's just I I had trouble finding it as interesting as some of the others. And in part because, again, it's hackneyed, right? It's got, um, okay, evil clowns. I haven't done that, but a lot of people have done that. Um, a mysterious plague. I mean, that's uh, become, I mean, like literally they're, they're borrowing from the Mask of the Red Death. Like the, the introduction of the clowns is a direct shout out to that. Um, and uh, there's, I guess I'm going to give this away. So if, if, if you're planning on playing the punchline, um, skip ahead about a minute or so in this video as of, as of now, because you're, you're going to otherwise get spoiled massively. Um, okay. Here's the spoiler, right? There's nothing supernatural going on. You know, this is completely um, not a supernatural event and uh, it just looks like one. And, and so that's, that's the spoiler. And you know what? I already did that <laughs> in uh, where was it? Uh, the Secret Order of the Red Lady, adventure number two of this compilation. It's one of the early RPG Pundit Presents issues. And, and there's been other people that have done it too, right? But it's specifically that there's like a cult that is that that is meant to look like a cult, but it's it, like, like it's a supernatural cult with supernatural powers, but it doesn't actually have any. Anyways, hopefully any of you who had skipped ahead, <laughs> I'm hoping that nobody got... That, 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 that nobody got spoiled that wasn't meant to be spoiled, you know? Um, and so those are like all perfectly fine plot points. They're just, I, I didn't find anything here that made it different from other adventures that I've seen. Um, unlike, you know, even, even like white power surprised me a bit, you know, and, and uh, the, um, what was it? The, the green, oh, I forget the one about the, the one about the, the, the alien uh, elf, vegetable elf from the stars <laughs> that 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 other book that one was was very well crafted i thought um crazy but well crafted you know um the punchline is the punchline is fine it's not terrible um it just didn't didn't call to my attention now how how will you know if it really appeals to you well um if you're looking for a low level adventure that features evil clowns <laughs> um that has sort of life and death stakes for the PCs um, if they're if they're planning to hang around. Um, probably especially good for a party that that feels at least somewhat heroic, you know, because I'd have a hard, hard time figuring why they would try to stop this elsewhere. Like actually, if you if you just like shifted, because the default just like like usual in in Lamentations is that this is about like 1630s Earth, basically. Um, if you shifted this down to like 1480s Earth, you know this would be a perfectly fine type of adventure for a group of of cleric um, inquisitors and their their assistants to go hunting down these guys um, in you know in Dark Albion and uh, uh, Cults of Chaos, the Cults of Chaos Inquisitor campaign, you know, um, which is just the thing, right? Like. <sighs> I think I've I've spoiled myself a little bit maybe with <laughs> with Cults of Chaos, which is an adventure generator that makes some like super um, unique types of adventures, and it's and it, and it and it means that you're not, you know, like um, ironically, apart from a couple of adventures that are direct homages to ancient folk tales, there's nothing in Old School Companion too that is quite as cliched as the, the the punchline is. And it's not cliched in a bad way. I don't want to, to like totally turn you off it. Again, if you really love the idea of the insane clown posse going around killing, uh, killing children for Satan and summoning the red death, then go for it. You know, like go, you can, you can um, pick up this book. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I think there are better OSR adventures out there. Sorry. Sorry to Zakharov. Uh, Kowalski. There are, in fact, better Zakharov Kowalski adventures out there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not meant to be an insult to him. Uh, it's uh, just, I'm calling it how I see it. But you might think differently. Again, the art is top notch. The production is top notch. Um, if you're a big uh, Kowalski fan, you might, uh, might want to pick it up anyways, because, you know, uh, mileage varies on these things. I'm giving my opinion and that's it. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much everything for today. If you like this video, 
please uh, hit like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and share this video anywhere that you think people will find it interesting or they'll piss people off. <laughs> I'm hoping it won't piss Zachar off, <laughs> off too much. I'm, you know, it's it's a perfect, it's a fine. It's not. I'm not rating. I rated a six out of ten. Okay, I'm gonna put it that way. I'm not. I'm not saying it's awful. I'm just saying, out of the uh, the ones I've seen so far in this new batch of Lamentations books, um, it's. It's the one that I that I've been less least impressed with so far. Out of out of many impressive ones, it's up against tough competition, right? And you know other tough OSR competition too. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, uh, check it all out and uh, thank you very much. Currently smoking uh, Dunhill Shell Diplomat plus Argento Natural. <laughs>